Kylian Mbappe's journey to the top isn't as straight as you think it is. From battling injuries to fighting his way into the toughest team in the world, this is the story of Mbappe's journey to the top. Wait till you hear about the incident that almost ruined his career. Mbappe was born on December 20th, 1998, and that year was pretty special for his home country. See, Mbappe was born in France, and at the time, they'd won the World Cup months back on their turf, beating a star-studded Brazil team 3-0 in the final. Safe to say a lot of kids became fans of the national team right after, and Killian was no different. Killian's family was big on sports. His dad, Wilfried, was a former professional footballer, and his mum, Beza Lamry, used to play handball at the top level back in the day too. Add to that a half-brother who also turned pro as well, and from then on, it was clear Mbappe had a career kicking balls. It wasn't just his family seeing this too. The big European clubs were interested in him, and all of this led to the Mbappe bidding war early on. At the time, Mbappe was one of the promising talents of his generation. Playing for AS Bondi, he was already developing faster than most of his mates. Couple that with his physique for a kid, and Mbappe had the big clubs trying to sign him. First on the list was Chelsea, and they were so interested in him that they offered him a trial at the club's academy, and even gave him the chance to play a game with the under-10s team. After that, it was off to Madrid to play for the club's youth team too. And there, Mbappe got the chance to meet some of the biggest names in the world. Heck, he even met this guy, Ronaldo. Add clubs like FC Bayern to the mix, and Mbappe was the hottest prospect on the block. But in the end, he decided he was going to stay home instead, and his next move changed his life. AS Monaco. At the time, the club was going through a new phase that brought a lot of changes. They just won the French League 2 and were looking to make a statement in the League 1 the following campaign. So they splashed the cash to make this guy the new face of the club, Radamel Falcao. But behind the scenes, Monaco was cooking something even bigger, and Mbappe was going to be the face of it. Apart from just buying big name players like Falcao, the owners had a pretty solid plan to turn the Monaco Academy into one of the best in Europe. So they signed Mbappe to the academy, and the initial plan was to have him work his way through the ranks into the first team. But after only just three weeks in, his progress had skyrocketed. Three weeks into his career, Mbappe made history by becoming the youngest player to play in a League One game, breaking a French legend's record, Thierry Henry. But this was only the beginning, because while most dudes would have been okay with breaking the appearance record alone, Mbappe was more than that. Heck, he wanted to dominate the league and show the world he was ready. And still, on that same 2015-16 season, he scored his first league goal for the club against Troyes, becoming the youngest baller in the league's history to find the back of the net at just 17 years. And from there, he took off. Months later, Mbappe signed his first professional contract with Monaco, a three-year deal that was going to see him stay until 2019. And I bet the plan was to keep him Mbappe in and around the team for the 2016-17 season. But no one could have predicted what was coming next. Not even Mbappe himself. 46 games, 28 goals, and 17 assists. And those stats alone don't even tell the full story. That season, Mbappe announced himself to the world, especially in the Champions League, where Monaco surprised everyone. They'd made it out of the group stages, and in the round of 16, Mbappe took over. He bagged this goal in Monaco's 5-3 first leg defeat, but it wasn't over because in the second leg, Mbappe opened the scoring to help Monaco win the game 2-0 and progress on away goals, knocking City out. In the quarterfinals versus Borussia Dortmund, Mbappe continued his impressive form. This time, he bagged a brace in the first leg and another goal in the second leg to help Monaco knock out Dortmund and send them to the semi-finals. Amazing! To show just how unexpected this one was, Monaco was going to be facing Juve in the semis, and Juve's goalie, Gianluigi Buffon, had already started his playing career before Mbappe was born. Damn! I guess the experience on the Juve team was just too much for Mbappe and Monaco, because in the end, despite Mbappe scoring Monaco's only goal in the game, they lost 4-1 on aggregate, and were knocked out. But this defeat didn't feel like the L to Mbappe and his teammates, because back in France, they'd done the impossible. 
table. They somehow managed to win the league. Mbappe played a huge role in this too, notching an impressive 17 league goals for a teenager on his team's way to winning the league. With this kind of form, there was no way Mbappe would be staying at Monaco at the end of that. And this was the start of another bidding war. This time, it was two clubs that realistically stood a chance of capturing Mbappe's signature, Real Madrid and PSG. And with Madrid failing to show any real interest, PSG capitalized on that and made Monaco an offer they knew they won't be able to resist. $145 million, and Mbappe was off to PSG as the second most expensive signing in football's history. Couple this with PSG making Neymar the most expensive baller on the planet weeks back, and it was clear Mbappe and Neymar were going to be the new star power in Paris. But let's just say it didn't quite work out like that. 2017, 18, and Mbappe wasted no time in settling in Paris. 21 goals and 16 assists in 46 games. But if I'm being honest, PSG didn't pay all that money for Mbappe just to win the league again. Heck, they could have signed me for free and I'd have done it. The plan from Nasser Al Khalifi and the PSG board was clear. It was to win the Champions League and get the team on board Mr. Football's channel on YouTube by hitting that subscribe button. Meaning Neymar and Mbappe were supposed to help them do that, but they choked on it. Mbappe's PSG team got drawn against heavyweights Real Madrid in the competition. Mbappe's first official meeting with his idol, Cristiano Ronaldo. But this fairy tale didn't have a happy ending for PSG. Ronaldo scored twice in both legs to knock them out. On the bright side, they did manage to win the league, but this wasn't the highlight for Mbappe. Because in the summer, my man owned the world. Coming into the 2018 World Cup in Russia, France arrived as a team with an outside chance. Thanks to impressive form, Mbappe made the cut for the plane to Russia, even bagging the iconic number 10 jersey, and made his name in the group stage. Mbappe scored the winning goal versus Peru in the second group stage game. France won the group, but somehow managed to bag Argentina in a huge match in the round of 16. And while it may have phased some of his teammates, it didn't phase Mbappe, because in this game, he had everyone going nuts. The game had hadn't even gone 15 minutes when Mbappe did this. Oh, back there. Hang on a minute. It's a penalty. It's a penalty for France. It's damn, I bet Mbappe would make Flash look slow. Still, Mbappe wasn't done because he hadn't scored yet, so he dropped this. And Mbappe! Oh, yes! France in this seesaw game. And this. Giroud helped on here. Mbappe, has got another and helped France to win 4-3 against Messi's Argentina. A statement win. Mbappe was a monster to the opposition in this tournament. France made it to the final against Croatia, and once again, Mbappe made history. Mbappe! Oh my word! With this goal, he became the youngest goal scorer in World Cup final history since Pele in 1958. Incredible. It didn't just end there. Mbappe's impressive performances helped him scoop up the Young Player of the Tournament award and coming back to France for the 2018-19 season, he was determined to show that his summer form wasn't just a purple patch. So he went at it again, only this time the results were even harder. 43 games, 39 goals and 17 assists. This time with the form Mbappe was in, he was supposed to be leading PSG's charge to winning the Champions League and despite topping a group that had eventual winners Liverpool and Napoli in it, it, they once again failed at the knockout stage, this time getting to the round of 16 against Manchester United. Despite taking a 2-0 win from the first leg at Old Trafford, in the return game at the Parc des Princes, the PSG team had a huge horror show, lost 3-1 and got knocked out on away goals. A disaster. Back in France, it was another league title for Mbappe. Add that to a golden boot too and he was ready to go again in the 2019-20. Until it happened. 37 games, 30 goals and 18 assists, but in reality Mbappe's 2019-20 season was divided into two parts. The first half of the season Mbappe was a different gravy, a Champions League hat-trick against Galatasaray in the group stage.
stage, coupled with a stunning collection of impressive goals, and he was on full form until COVID struck. With the game getting delayed, the French government decided to end the Ligue 1 season early, meaning Mbappe and PSG had already won the league. And all attention now was to the Champions League. UEFA had to improvise with COVID around, so they scrapped off the double leg phase in the competition and had the entire thing being played in Portugal, meaning Mbappe and PSG had no excuse to not go through now. They beat Atlanta in the quarter-final thanks to a dying minute Mbappe assist to Chopu Moting and beat RB Leipzig 3-0 in the semi-finals. But in the final against Bayern Munich, Mbappe went AWOL. This was as close as it got for Mbappe. Kingsley Coman scored the only goal of the game to give Bayern Munich the Champions League and Mbappe was out in the cold again. 2020-21 came along and Mbappe showed that he put the Champions League final defeat behind him because that season he was on fire. 47 games played, 42 goals and 11 assists. Damn. On a personal level, Mbappe was ticking off all the right boxes. He didn't just win the golden boot again, he also won the top assist provider award too, meaning he dominated everything. But on a collective level, PSG hit a new low. This time they didn't even win the league. These guys did. Lille. Champions League. PSG couldn't kick on from that COVID run, unfortunately. But once again, Mbappe proved he was easily the best player outside of Messi and Ronaldo. PSG got drawn to face Barcelona in the round of 16, another Mbappe versus Messi matchup. And this time, Mbappe won again. He didn't just win, he dropped a masterclass in Catalonia, a hat trick against Barca with Messi watching. Add to that a goal in the 1 1 second leg draw, and Mbappe bagged four goals to knock Barca out. In the quarterfinals, Mbappe and PSG were facing the same team that beat them in last year's final. And this time, Mbappe popped two goals to knock Bayern out. But unfortunately, an injury in the semi-final second leg meant he couldn't do anything as PSG got knocked out by Man City. Well, at least he had the Euros coming in the summer with France, right? Let's just say he'd rather not remember this too. For the first time in his career, Mbappe had a tournament stinker. France was drawn into a crazy group with Portugal, Hungary and Germany, but they managed to finish top. And no, Mbappe didn't contribute to any of this. One assist all tournament. And in the round of 16, they faced Switzerland in a crazy game that finished 3-3 after extra time, meaning it entered a penalty shootout. And with everyone having scored for the Swiss to put them 5-4 up in the shootout, Mbappe had to score or France would get knocked out. And boom. And Mbappe is the one to filter. He missed. Sommer saved Mbappe's penalty and what followed next was a series of hate messages for Mbappe. It was so bad that Mbappe himself even admitted to almost quitting the national team because of it. But his elite mentality had him realise that on the journey to the top, it's never going to be easy as always. So he picked himself up and in 2022, set the world on fire again. Remember when I mentioned the dynamic duo of Neymar and Mbappe earlier? Well, it had now become a formidable trio because Messi had gotten so tired of losing to Mbappe every time that he decided to link up with him in Paris and together they created a front three that was supposed to scare the world and dominate everything but the only thing they dominated was FIFA Ultimate Team because on the pitch it never worked out. Obviously the idea was simple, win the Champions League so when they got drawn to face Real Madrid in the round of 16 the whole world was watching as Mbappe scored the winner in the first leg and put on a performance in the second leg too, scoring three goals with two disallowed for offside. But that was as good as it got for PSG. Messi couldn't get any rhythm and Madrid scored three goals to knock PSG out in the round of 16, a familiar sight. Back on the international scene, the Nations League was around the corner and Mbappe was on a mission to prove a point. After his disappointing Euros campaign, he lit up the tournament, bagging a goal and assist in the semi-final comeback win versus Belgium. And repeating the same feat in the final versus Spain to win his second trophy with the national team. Redemption. But it wasn't just on the pitch Mbappe was bagging all of the attention. Off it, he was making the headlines too. Real Madrid was back and this time they really wanted him. At that point, Mbappe had just one year left on his PSG deal and there was no way PSG was prepared to lose a player like him for free. Meaning they couldn't afford to let him run down his contract and also meaning they either had to sell him or make him renew. Madrid had two 
offers turned down, and the final day of the transfer window in 2022 was incredible. But in the end, Mbappe chose to stay. And to be fair to him, it would have been hard for any logical human being to say no, after PSG offered him the bag of a lifetime. A three-year deal, but the figures involved were out of this world. In his new contract, Mbappe was going to be earning between 6 to $7 million weekly, a signing on fee of $250 million to be spread over three years, and even better, a position of power at the club. With this, Mbappe could bet to choose the players he wanted the club to sign, and the positions he felt they should strengthen. There's no way he could say no to this. Mbappe stays became a trending hashtag, and 2022-23 became a mixed bag for him. Halfway through through the season, Mbappe was on a plane with the national team again, this time it was to Qatar, on the world's biggest stage. The 2022 World Cup and France and Mbappe came into this one as huge favourites. Despite having several key players from the 2018 squad miss out through injuries, France still pulled through. Mbappe bagged three goals in the group stage, then another two in the round of 16 versus Poland, helped his team win the quarter-finals and semi-finals against England and Morocco respectively. And now they were back in the final again, this time against Argentina. Mbappe versus Messi, the trilogy. Argentina took a 2-0 lead early on and up until the 77th minute, it looked like these two goals were going to be enough to beat France. But what followed next was Kylian Mbappe putting the world on red alert. Then this. even lie, I went shirtless and almost broke my glasses cheering this one from my sofa. What a comeback. Mbappe had pulled the game to 2-2 for France, and even when Messi scored in extra time to make it 3-2, he scored again to level the match, becoming the first man to bag a World Cup hat-trick since Jeff Hurst in 1966, and took the game to pens. Mbappe went first for France and scored, but unfortunately his teammates couldn't get the job done, missing two penalties, and Argentina won the World Cup thanks to the shootout. Mbappe claimed the tournament's golden boots and showed every everyone that he was ready to move on and become the next big thing. And with the season resuming after the World Cup break, Mbappe was back in action for PSG. Only this time, it was same old, same old. PSG got knocked out in the round of 16 again, and now Mbappe was fed up. It's 2023-24, and anyone who's been watching knows Mbappe has already announced his decision. He will not renew with PSG. He's leaving at the end of the season, and I'm pretty sure everyone knows where. Florentino Perez you wise old man. I bet Mbappe leaves PSG with no regrets. Getting that deal in 2022 set him up for life and had him buying stuff so crazy, I made a list of the 10 things Mbappe owns that costs more than your life. And all you gotta do is hit the next video to check it out.